everyone, how are you? I hope you're well. So today I want to play around with my um, colors and I'm going to create a color wheel. Now to do that with, I will try out my new gift, which was gifted to me by my husband for Valentine's Day, which was very, very sweet. It's the Iris Drawing Compass. Um, I actually was looking at this compass to buy myself and was quite curious, but I just couldn't get over to pay um, for, for a compass that much. But when I was gifted it, it was just like, whoa moment, because it's such a stunning craftsmanship and it's just done in a beautiful way. So it's a brass iris, it also contains a wooden base which is centering tool and an instruction a leaflet. I will actually show you um, how to work with it because I put a picture on Instagram and I think a few people were interested in seeing how this thing works. So we're going to do that. Um, usually I would use my, you know, old school compass um, just with the needle and the pencil, but um, this is different in the sense that basically you don't need to make a hole in your paper. So when you're like, you know, working on a sketchbook, the only downside to those um, classical compasses is that you make a hole there and obviously if you're doing like watercolor accidentally you could leak it through to the pages. Not that it happened to me, I've been quite careful, but um, that's just sort of the benefit of this compass. So um, it's, it's beautiful to look at, so this is obviously the packaging. And then here is the actual compass, which is super heavy. It's made out of brass and it's just a beautiful, beautiful thing. Maybe I should have polished it for you because it was, um, obviously I used it now and um, it has maybe some fingerprints on it, but it's a stunning thing. And um, so this is the top of it and this is the bottom. The bottom is made out of some sort of a rubbery kind of um, material which means it doesn't sort of glide and slide around on the surface where you put it it stays really nicely because it's also heavy you can use one hand uh, when drawing the circle which I'll show you later anyway so there are a couple of things which uh, I discovered um, so we'll get into that when I start drawing the uh, circle and I'll explain what we're doing but basically, um, before we do that, I just want to share the colors that I will be using today. So I'm going to use two jars of water um, to keep things nice and clean because the color that I'm using, one of them is super granulating. So here is going to be my dirty water and my clean water. And then I have a little dish for the mixing of the colors. Here are the colors. So I've got Conacredon Gold, Deep Scarlet and Sodolite Genuine. I think this color palette would make, um, well, first of all, three of them look beautifully together, but I'm really curious to find out what mixes they would make. And so that's what I'm intending to do. I will do one, um, like a compass um, circle here, and then maybe next to it, just some like external mixes. Um, maybe, I will see. And if you're curious, the sketchbook that I'm using, this is the Jackson's hardcover. I'll try to link it up. For my brush, I'll use Jackson's Quill 10-0. This is my working horse and I love using it for swatches. Uh, the Raven is a bit soft and kind of um, holds more water. So it's not great for this paper because it's it buckles easily, but I love using it for... Um, you know, just simple sort of sketches and trying out kind of colors. So, um, Conacredon Gold. So all three colors are by Daniel Smith. It's not a surprise to most of you. Daniel Smith is my go-to watercolor brand, although I do like a few others, but they are my favorite. Now it looks like we might have hit the bottom of this, although I should be able to get some out. Let's see. Yeah, there is enough here. 
to play around with. I know you can cut them up and sort of use more colour, but I am intending to collect my empty uh, tubes and put them like into a little jar. And I think that would look super cute. So I hope that's going to be enough there. And then we have quinacridone deep for our red. And Sodalite Genuine. This is my favorite Primatech color. It is gorgeous. You need very little of it because otherwise it just turns into black and it's then hard to see all the beautiful properties of this color. Okay, so I've got my colors ready. So here we go. Here is the compass. And here is the, what is it called again? Wooden centering tool. So here's what you do. You basically have two ways of using it. So either you hold it like that and then start trying to remember which way to turn it. Okay, so this, um, so you hold it like that and then the top part, the brass bit, you just gently push anti-clockwise and then you get your James Bond <laughs> thing coming out. And um, you can do it also on the paper. So if you say lay it flat, and for that I'll take the thing off, you literally can do it just like this. So you can see the rubber is holding on to the paper really well. It's not sliding about. So center it wherever, whichever way you want it to be. I'd probably go here. And then... All you need to do to begin with is just draw the circle. Now, this is going to be the diameter of your circle. The other thing I would suggest using with it is one of those mechanical pencils, because I've seen actually on the um, on the Iris Drawing Compass um, um, Instagram, someone was using a pencil in the demo, and that pencil, the graphite, was just shaving when they had the metal thing out. So this bit here, it was just shaving and it made such a mess. So I don't think it's a great idea to use a graphite regular pencil, so I would recommend using one of those mechanical ones so that you gently, um, you know, have metal going against metal, metal. I don't think it will damage anything as long as you don't apply too much pressure and just you know, do it gently. So I'm going to start by creating my circle. So just really easily like that. And then um, I'm going to put this wooden bit in, which basically suggests where the center is. So that's our, instead of doing the hole, you just do it like that. And that's our center basically. Now, the next circle, can you see? So, this was on a seven, so this is a seven uh, diameter thing circle. Now, the one in the middle, if I wanted to create one in the middle, basically, you see the this little red arrow. So, now it's on a four, so it goes from zero to seven. So, um, maybe I'll go three and a half. Yeah, three and a half is good. So you can remember your sizings and use them every time like that. So gently, there's not much need for any pressure. In fact, I, I was holding on, but I don't even need to hold on. I can easily go like that. It's sitting there, so you just can use one hand if you needed to hold something else at that point. Um, so how small does it go? I'd say comfortably about one, one centimeter. It sort of stops here. I, I don't think you would want to go any further. Um, and I don't want to break it, so I will just leave it at that. So that's it. That's all you need to do. Now, you would just need to get your, um, ruler and sort of do the lines. It's very, really simple and it works really well for my small sketchbook here because it's just perfect to fit in two. I don't need to uh, measure how big they need to be. It works nicely. 
Um, then this stand, you can use it also like that on your desk and it makes a really beautiful presentation um, on your desk. So, you know, if you're working with it and you will be going back to it, you can just sort of leave it on your desk like that. Okay, so let me grab my um, ruler. So I would start with the yellow and here I would do a bit of a guesswork and I'd say I'd put a line about here. And then one line across and then one across the two. There you go. So it's nice and easy, just do an X and then across the X. So let's start with our swatch feast. Or fest, swatch fest. <laughs> so here we go, Quinacridon Gold. I'll have to order a new tube of it. It's a color I like having. So I will do Intense, like a full-on swatch, and a lighter water-tart one down below. So that's why I needed two. You could do like a white mix. Today I'm not going to do it. You could also do a black mix. So I would like black um, mask, like mask black, or you could do brown mask. <laughs> Mars brown, that is. I don't know, I sound funny today. I had, um, today's Wednesday, I'm filming this on, third day of children being back at school, and I had two days of super intense, like, you know, throwing myself into work and really working hard and getting so much done. And today I thought, today is going to be my chill day, so maybe my brain just switched off a little bit. Okay, so there we go. <clears throat> I'm just going to make the color move down a little. Okay, that about here is good. Okay, so next one. Deep Scarlet. Tiny little bit. It's also super intense gorgeous color just going to mix up a little bit more pigment into here Like so. And then with a clean brush, I'm going to make like a pinky mix. Came out a bit watery. Just using a, a, a tissue here to get the water out. A bit more pigment in instead. Okay, so like that. And then for our third color, we're going to go into the Sodalite Genuine. So I'm trying to mix it up dark here, but I still want to see the properties of this color, which are stunning. So about there, and then touch more water. Okay. 
So now I can possibly start mixing things and you know what I'm going to use up the color from the um, I'm just going to clip it in like so and I want to use up this color here so I'm just going to no wasting of anything You can see how intense it is. So from this little bit, you can get quite a bit done. Okay, so uh, then, thinking I might need, for mixing, I might need another tray. So I'm gonna go load in my quinacridone gold into here and do the red first. So, or the orange rather, the secondary color orange. Deep Scarlet, probably will need the tiniest amount of it. So that's a nice orange right here. Yes, I'm going to go with that. And then a bit more water. If you see that the color might be a bit lighter, then just pick it up with the brush and kind of till the page to guide it there. That's our orange. Now let's have a look what we get if we combine. So, so we've got enough red here and then just the tiniest amount So if the water is starting to become a bit tinted, I'm now also using the clean jar. So with this one, I'll start with just a little and then adding a bit more as I go. So it's now starting to become a bit more dark and I think I would want even more until I get more to a purple tone. So about there. That's an interesting color. Maybe even touch more. Yes, so that's quite beautiful. It's like a grayish violet or a violet gray pretty beautiful these two colors should separate and we should see something really interesting happening here okay now Touch more water. Trying my brush out. Mm, this is nice. Okay. Right, let's see now what green if at all we can get with this mix so i'm going to go into the quinacridone gold here which we have mixed up and i will start again with tiny little bit of the sodalite genuine 
So that makes an interesting, kind of like an olive color or like a mustard color. So if I add a bit more, let's see where we get there, if we like it or not. Yeah, we are getting to a green. It's quite a moody green. Okay, I think any dark kind it will just start getting moody and moodier. So I'll stick to this color. It's like a khaki type of a green, which is actually quite nice. Yeah, it's a pretty color. And I'm also expecting some lovely granulations here. And pigment separation as well. going to lift the lighter color just slightly because it's a bit dark. So to lift it you just dry your brush out on a piece of paper, um, paper or like a tissue and then just pick up some of this color right here. And that's it. So you can see what's happening in the dish here. The pigments are separating. Lovely. And I'm going to go ahead write down the names and the pigments out as well and I think it makes such a beautiful color wheel, very um, kind of deep and strong colors, really beautiful. Okay, so here we are. And how beautiful is this? I mean, isn't that just gorgeous? Look at the beautiful color separation here. You get this gold um, Gunagra and gold shining through and having that um, luminous kind of appeal to it. Um, and then of course the granulation of the Sodalite Genuine. And then the Sodalite Genuine is shining through here as well and separating the deep scarlet. It's just stunning. And the orange is quite beautiful and vibrant because both of these are super um, luminous and vibrant colors. So I am really, really happy with this color palette. Now, Deep Scarlet is a single pigment of PR175 and Quinacridone Gold has two pigments in there, PO48 and PY150. Um, yeah, so Sodalite Genuine is a, a genuine pigment, so it's made from a mineral and therefore doesn't have any information on the pigment. So that is it for today. I hope you enjoyed it and um, we'll see. Maybe I'll do another video where we'll have a little bit more fun uh, creating in between colors. So see you then.